Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Since 1949, Ruger has embodied the spirit of hunting in America. Ruger firearms are built to deliver the reliable and accurate performance that seasoned veterans demand and new hunters can trust. At Ruger, we believe that hunting is about more than just the thrill of the chase. It's about the freedom and opportunity that come with it. This is our heritage, and this is Ruger. Hey, you guys, thank you for tuning into this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. We are at the Ruger booth at SHOT Show, and I'm with Marissa Loren. And basically, like, we kind of met just through social media following, like, each other. And um, I am so, I love your page, and I love everything you're doing. You're, like, a talented tattoo artist. You are a talented shooter. You're a world traveler. You're beautiful. You're, like, doing all of these things. And it's so awesome just to follow you and see like your incredible journey. And um, you're, you've been so nice. I must say like there's a lot of catty women out there. And I was at um, NFR Hunter Christmas a couple years ago. And you like came by my booth and you're like, hi, I think I follow you online. And I'm like, I follow yeah. you online. And it was awesome because most people would never do that. So well, I want to say. Which I think is crazy because I was I just know. walking around and I was like, oh, I think I she know that's really familiar. Yeah. And I think I know her. I feel like we chat online. And I was like, I want to say hi. Yeah. Which I think would be a normal thing for people to do. It's not so much. Okay. Like, what, you mean, you know, when you see someone, you're like, Ooh, I don't know. Or you're like, I follow them, but you don't say anything. Yeah. And especially women can be kind of. I call it dominant doe syndrome. Oh. It's like they're like, you know what I mean? Like you got that dominant doe in a herd and she kind of like pins her ears and like fights over the food and runs the other deer around. And, and there's always that one, right? That it's like, she's the dominant doe and you're, it, it's just hard to approach her or whatever. Yeah. And, and like women get like that where they're like, I'm the dominant doe. And then the other one's like, well, I'm the dominant doe. And pretty soon you're like, <laughs> and uh, I, don't, I don't. I. I don't, I don't play that. I don't either. No. I don't care about any of that. No, like, it's if awesome. You're nice to me. Like it's I all be good. Nice to you. Yeah. We can all eat. <laughs> you um, you're here at Shot Show, and I'm like, my husband's getting up at 5 a.m. every day and working out. I have not worked out once this week. I did last week at Sheep Show, but I'm. I, my hair takes too long I to do, do I right? Get it. Like I, you know, and you're doing 75 hard while you're here. Yeah, it, I don't think it was like the best. This I literally chose the hardest time of my year with my travel schedule to do this. Yeah, and it wasn't on purpose. I was like, this is when I'm gonna do it, and then I was like, oh, this was a mistake. <laughs> but now I'm in it, so I'm just making it happen. What day number are you? Uh, I think this is like 36, 35, 36. So we're getting close to the halfway point. I did it for like what I do, 30 something days two years ago and then we moved it was last year I was doing it last spring and then we moved from Oregon to Wyoming and we were traveling and I'm like I quit it's really hard when you're traveling or yeah. like working all day like it's really difficult yeah yeah so you're up at what time this morning working uh, 6 a.m. in the gym uh, no, we did an outside workout. I took her, my dog for a mm -hmm. walk and uh, we did that first. I always like to do my outdoor workouts first if I can, because I feel like it's harder at the end of the day or yeah. if I don't like make time. Whereas like if I can get to the gym later or I can do like an e-mom at home or something yeah. inside. So I like to do that. Do you uh, use Peloton? I don't have a Peloton. I <laughs> so I am like the mom bod lady like that's what i feel oh, like gosh. i'm like oh no i have a mom way. bod not even and i <laughs> and i do the peloton at home with my little dumbbells and sh we do e-moms and i mean it's it's a, some, I mean, it's just dumbbell work right like right. i don't have a gym membership because we travel so much it's like insane for me to 
pony up not 100 bucks a month to go to the gym. Oh, oh, well, well, how much are your gym members? <laughs> we have, well, for him and I to go. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's, we, the gym that I want to go to is like, has the pool and like, yeah. you know, the whole thing. It's, yeah. it's they're the, you know, it's In like Arizona, a YMCA. It's pretty you know? easy. It's like $25 a month for a membership and they got a bunch of places. Yeah, we don't so. have like a yeah, cheap yeah. gym well, like Wyoming that. Well, Wyoming Yeah. <laughs> I should, well, for the two of us, I guess I should maybe look into it a little bit more. But it's, anyway, so it's money and then I'm already paying $39 a month for yeah. my Peloton. That's fire. You know, so I'm like, okay, and the Peloton I can do anywhere I am. So I was at Sheep Show last week and I put on my little lady and I set her on the ground and I'm like working out with this lady and everybody's looking at me like, what are you doing? My Peloton workout. <laughs> I but love it keeps that. me on track. Yeah, absolutely. I've only used a Peloton. Like, I was at a, my friend's house. Uh, I drove down some paintings to them, and they got a Peloton bike. Yeah. And they, like, compete against each other. And oh, then, yeah. Yeah. It's a and, thing. Uh, yeah. I was dying. Yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is actually really difficult. Yeah. Well, I have the bike, but the app is cool because you could do, like, weight training and yoga oh, that's and neat. stretching and, like, there's running. So, like, when I'm, like, in the summertime, Yogi and I like to run a bit. And so, like, I could do outdoor running, and it'll be like, yeah. okay, so, like, a light run and it'll kind of give you a cadence and then the lady will tell you okay now speed up your run pace for quarter mile or whatever and it it kind of motivates you along you know what I mean like anyway (laughs) I'm not doing that right here because I'm a quitter (laughs) that's okay at least for this it definitely has crossed my mind I'm like ah this is really hard to yesterday was hard because we were like we walked so much inside the convention so like I, like trying to get two, like two workouts in later in the day was really really tough. Difficult. And, yeah. Difficult. You're a strong girl, but you work at it really hard. I do. I try. Yeah. I, I've been, like been dealing with a lot of health issues like the last few years. So like my goal is always just to like do the best with what I have. Yeah. Like whatever I can do, I just try to do that. So it comes and goes. <laughs> so it, that's part of it. And you, like I've been talking to a couple competitive shooters today, and so many of them. Their primary focus, apart from like shooting training, is their body. Yeah. Like nourishing their body, care and condition of their body, staying fit, lifting weights. And like I see that crossover so much with you as well because you are a competitive shooter also, but you I also see you not only training when you are in that season, but also in the gym a lot like you are crushing it all the time thank you i'm trying i used to do competitive bodybuilding like back in the day so did i yeah did you do figure i I wanted to but at the time i was way too small to compete in figure like naturally and i didn't want to do uh, all of that stuff yeah, yeah so yeah. I did bikini um for a few years and then I got really sick but like I've always just done fitness in my yeah. life and then when I started competitive shooting I saw that there was like a transition from how it used to be a lot of people started prioritizing being fit yeah and healthy because it makes you a better shooter like you're 100%. an athlete so like why would you not like train like an athlete outside yeah. of shooting so I kind of like that and it worked out for me because I'm like oh sweet I can keep doing the things I like in the yeah. gym and training for it and shoot on top well, of and the grip strength for recoil management is yeah. so important. And picking up those weights, and we like that good old farmer's carry. Yeah. Like, that thing is good for you if you're a shooter. Like, I mean... Like your forearm, forearm pump, grip yeah. strength, all of that really matters when, especially, you know, when we're shooting a lot, wrist strength, you know, if you think about it, if you're shooting a light flippy pistol oh, yeah. and you have a nice strong grip and then lots of forearm strength, you're running that thing so much better. Your, your sight picture is coming back so much faster. Like everything is better. Yeah. Plus like being like agility, like moving from place to place for like USPSA competitions or whatever, there's a lot of movement involved. So being like physically fit and being able to like move your body in an athletic way really benefits you when it comes to breaking down like the time like you can like JJ Ricasa does that really well yeah. where he like can make up time in between positions because of his movement and yeah. I think that's like super that, I mean I like that like when I watch he him is shoot. a speed ninja I, know. <laughs> I mean like I was talking to another girlfriend earlier this week and she's comparing herself to JJ and I'm like wait time out here <laughs> like nobody can compare themselves yeah, to him he is so fast it's like him and Doug Koenig are, like, they're in a whole nother world. I and, know. Like, you can't, right? Yeah. Oh, I definitely can't. <laughs> I'm nowhere <laughs> near JJ's level. No, but he, yeah. it's footwork. Like, a lot of those guys train like football players. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And they're, like, moving their feet. Are you doing speed work and, like, doing 
Yeah, I, like I, I started and, doing it this year, actually. Doing, like, yeah, doing a lot more, like, footwork and stuff. Yeah. Like, so it's been helping. Do you have a trainer? No, I just do no. it on my own. You just Are you on yeah. YouTube, like, Googling sometimes. it? Or how is this? I mean, yeah. I, like, I use YouTube sometimes, yeah. but, like, I have so many friends who are in so many different parts of the yeah. fitness industry, like, gymnastics, professional athletes, like, uh, personal trainers, nutritionists. So anytime I need help, I can just reach out to one of them and be like, hey, like, give me a workout plan for this or something, yeah. and they're willing. Well, and I heard you mention that JJ also sends you with like some training yeah. programs yeah. as well. Anytime I ask him, I'm like, what do I, I was like, these are things I need to work on for shooting. Like, what should I do? And he'll send me drills all the time. Can you uh, put me on that email list? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Cause I want in on that as well. Yeah. Because it's like I, a group text message we can start like, Hey, well, it is go. so much like there's a, there's a saying, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And, and that is so true. Like you have to go to the range with a plan. Absolutely. And what what are your objectives? What are you trying to improve on? And, and like I was listening to Doug talk earlier and he's like, look, I, I go run a match. I go do something. And I look at my overall performance and I evaluate and I do self-reflection. Where is the hole? Yeah. And how can I fill that hole in my performance? Is it is it Was it my speed? Was it, I mean, nutrition? Was it how I felt? Was it whatever? And plugging that like for me I found like when I'm shooting I'm really slow mm -hmm. um, and the, the people that are, are good they make it look it's so fast and so seamless it's like this repetition and then the other thing for me is eating oh yeah like if I don't eat girl I'm going down <laughs> I think that's I think that's a lot of people like it's not bad. getting I feel like uh, the majority of people actually under eat and people would think that's not the case but that's actually true like you can actually gain weight by under eating because yeah. your body goes into like kind of like a starvation yeah. mode where it's just con it keeping all, fat. Stores all that just fat store it all. yeah and anything you put in it it just wants to hold on to so you like that's that's the case for a lot mm -hmm. of people yeah and you don't want to get there like taking care like I was trained to eat like a diabetic so every three to four hours four hours tops having the same balance of nutrient ratios yeah. and you know eating clean but like when I'm shooting a match or I'm at a competition like it's hard to eat like that so Absolutely. it's just getting a handful of nuts or you know yeah. kicking in some a protein bar or whatever yeah. you know whatever you can get in kind of quick in between yeah. keep your focus stay in the game I think it's better just to like make smart choices like if you need to get calories in yeah. you can still do that in like a smart way yeah. especially if you already know like hey I'm going to be shooting a match today and I know this is going to be the case like Packing those snacks is super easy, so you have them. Yeah. I feel like that's, like, people make it way too difficult. Like, oh, yeah. I can't. And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. you just, you know, a little extra time, you could. <laughs> that's exactly right. You have to take them, and then you have to force yourself. And then electrolyte replacement, oh, too. Oh, absolutely. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, we shoot out in the desert all the time now because I'm in Arizona, and it's hot. Yeah. Especially in like the summertime, so like e electrolytes is such a huge part of that. Like you, you could drink enough water and it won't make a difference. No. if you really need like salt and all of that. Mm -hmm. So you got to put it all in to get it all out. Yeah. We were listening to a podcast the other day, um, Bruno from um, Born Primitive, and he was talking about him and his wife. His wife is like ultra competitive in bodybuilding, and they do a, like a small cup of warm water in the morning with a teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt. And a squeeze of lemon, like yeah. a whole lemon in there. And they drink that every morning. Yogi and I tried it. I did it twice. I was like, I think I'm just going to use my wilderness athlete. Like, I'm, I'm out on this. This isn't my jam. I don't enjoy this. I'm good. Have you, are you doing like your own concoctions like that? No, no. I, I use like, uh, like, well, I work for first, first form. form. So first form has hydration sticks yeah. that I use most of the time. I have other friends who will do that, like pre-workout, like Himalayan pink salt before they go to the gym. And I'm like, I have hydration sticks. I'll just take these. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not into the yeah. pink salt. At all. Yogi quit on it. He calls me and he's like, I think... I think I'm done with the, the pink sea salt and lemon juice. I'm like, okay, I was done after twice. I did it twice. And he's like, don't you want to be healthy? And he's like body shaming me for not wanting to drink it. I'm like, no, I don't want to be healthy. I'm not doing this. This is what it takes. I'm not, I'm out. I'm not doing it. Uh, I feel it, you. Yeah, it's, it's bad. It's brutal. So you, you haven't shot a competition in a little while though, you were saying. Oh yeah. Um, I think the last one I did was in November and that's just because I had so much traveling yeah like I and I've been waiting on a new gun to shoot competition but I've just been traveling literally non-stop since the end of November um I'm ready for a break yeah <laughs> yeah like yeah. after this I'll have like 
a couple weeks break after SHOT Show, and then I have one more big trip, and then I'm taking like a pretty long break. Yeah, well, you vacation for a living also. Yeah. Like, seriously, this woman has been all over the world. Where are you going this year? Uh, so this year, um, like in February, that's my first big trip of the year is South Africa. Mm -hmm. So we'll be there for a week or so, eight days, and then my next big trip will be Morocco at the end of the year. I'm trying mm -hmm. to only do two big ones this year because mm -hmm. I did like six this last, last year. year. <laughs> and it was a little too many. So are you bringing a cameraman with you on these? Uh, yeah, I have a friend who's a, she's a professional photographer. She actually lives in Vegas. Um, and she'll come on me with trips um, as like my plus one. And then she'll do all of the like photos and content for it, which is mm -hmm. great. I'm um, like super grateful that she goes with me. Cause if I go by myself, I take nothing. No, 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 you can't, you have to have a team. So yeah. are you planning your wardrobes or do you have somebody you're I plan, working with? I, I plan, no, I just plan them ahead of time. So yeah, I like look at Pinterest and I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like, do I have anything like this? Or like, I bargain shop. I don't like spending a lot of money, especially if I'm like going on a bunch of trips. Like, yeah. I'll reuse outfits. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a bargain shopper as well. Hell yeah. Um, you do have a really great like fashion stuff. I think they call them try-ons. Oh. Like you do these try-ons. Oh. You're like, here's it there. And you're like snapping and then it's on or, you know, whatever. I've done that like twice now. Yeah. It cute. takes me for fucking ever. <laughs> like, I don't know how people this do it. This is the scenes. Nobody knows it takes forever. <laughs> uh, they should. I'm like, I don't know how people do this regularly. Like how much time do you have to put in? It takes, you're saying your hair takes a while. It takes oh forever to get ready. And I'm like, you have to plan like a whole extra hour or two just to do this video. Oh my God. You're like, your try-on that you watch in 10 seconds takes Marissa an hour. It probably takes me longer than other people because I don't know what I'm doing and the camera angle is always wrong. I'm like duct taping it to a mirror like this is good. <laughs> I freaking love you. This is great. That is me. I'm like balancing cameras or I call my husband and I'm like will you do this? Yeah no you can't. You have to have like help. With I know. This. It's so, and it is so much work. Like so much of what I do too is like, all right, we're producing this content. What, what guns am I doing? What, what gear do I need? What am I going to wear? And you have to put it all together and people don't yeah. realize like everything you're doing, you're doing yourself. Yeah, you are your own boss. Yeah, I don't have any help really. Like even this year, like with my friend going, like I kind of like, I'm like, Hey, if you want to come on these trips and you know, take pictures, that would be great. But she gets like a free trip, trip out of it. Like she pays for her flight, but, um, everything I do is on my own. Most of the time it's just with my own like cell phone. So yeah. it's so not, are your photos, cell phone pictures, a lot of them. The ones I take myself are always just like a crappy iPhone photos, but she takes obviously professional ones. And those are all the ones that look better. So, so do you have like a goal when you're on these trips? Like, okay, we need to take 50 photos or five photos I mean obviously five is pretty light yeah, yeah. Um, but you know because every look you might take 50 photos in that look and there's one uh, I mean we do not plan anything ever you we talk about doing don't. it like hey we're gonna plan it this time and then we get there and we like we didn't plan anything so we're gonna wing it that's been the case like even this like she's gonna be in South Africa and we're like should we plan stuff and I'm like good luck like, mm -hmm. especially because we're doing it in, like, a group aspect. So, like, I also, like, feel weird. I don't like taking photos anyways. It just doesn't feel natural to me. It feels super weird. But, like, taking time away from the group or, like, everyone else's experience just to take photos feels bad to me. So I'm always like, can we just do this super quick and get a couple and then hopefully they're good. And if not, eh, that's the way I look, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and like, well, you always look amazing. Oh, that's nice. Of you. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so, you know, that's, um, so if people want to book a trip with you, how do they do that? Yeah. So I always post the, the trip links on my Instagram page. Instagram's pretty much the only thing I use right now. So I always post the links there in my bio and then I'll share stories and details on them. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So it's like a Trova trip link for the group trips. Okay. Yeah. So you're doing that. That's like, that is an awesome way to see the world. It is. And experience new cultures and eat new food. You eat all the food and do all the drinking. <laughs> I do. And, <laughs> and you're doing 75 hard. Well, like, I don't know. Well, I, I, start, I didn't, I haven't I was done. Gonna say. <laughs> I haven't done 75 hard on one of those trips yet. South Africa will be the first one. So we'll see how it goes. Oh. Yeah. You'll be fine. The food down there is so clean. Yeah. Like you'll be good. And you yeah. can get your workouts in and yeah. you just got to work around fine. it. Is that a photo safari only? Um, I think. Those are people hunting. No, there's no hunting. Okay. Yeah. Photo it's safari. just photo safari. We're doing like, yeah, I think the only like the last two days or the yeah. safari mm -hmm. and we're doing other stuff ahead of time but yeah just photo safari that'll be so incredible yeah. it's a beautiful country yeah. um i'm assuming you're probably going to the limpopo i don't think we're going to that one i okay. would have to check but i don't think it's that one okay 
Yeah. I don't know that many know. places. There's Yogi like a handful of them. <clears throat> so. There's a lot of different places yeah. to go. It's a country. It's a country. It's a country. <laughs> so there's a lot of places to go. Um, so what else you got going on this year? Are you going to shoot some matches? Yeah, I'm going to shoot. That's like my goal because I'm working with Staccato now is like I want to start switching divisions and dedicating more time to shooting more matches. What discipline? Uh, so I'll be doing limited optics. Okay. That's the division, which will be nice because I was shooting open and the ammo is really expensive and now I can shoot nine again and maybe mm -hmm. save a little money. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, I like that's like my goal with shooting right now is just to focus on that mm -hmm. yeah I would like to get into mounted shooting that's what I really want to do yeah because you want some horses you, you grew up with horses I did yeah. yeah yeah my whole life we like I lived on a farm we did 4-H and horse shows and rodeos so I really where did you grow up in Colorado okay yeah so I really miss having all that so I'm like I want to get a house and some land and horses again mm -hmm. <laughs> what oh, oh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. you so yeah you're you rope uh, this one's not mine. This was actually a gift. Um, it's funny story because uh, I had was on Instagram talking about one of the things I I left my house. I moved out of my home when I was 16, mm -hmm. and I just left like everything. Um, and I one of the things I said I, the only thing I really miss is all of my like championship belt buckles. And uh, someone on Instagram sent me one of their buckles mm. from roping and I was like well that's super cool so it was like a really cool gift to like make up until I get to win my own again so, so what was your discipline Were, did uh, you do breakaway roping uh, no I didn't do any roping um, I did like western riding and then a little bit of barrels mm -hmm. but I wanted to do breakaway roping I just didn't get to so I don't know how to rope so I'm always like hey that's great you can do that and I, keep your fingers yeah. yeah I rope like at home on like dummies <laughs> do like, you yeah just for fun <laughs> you kind of do everything it's great <laughs> yeah yeah I have I have two horses and eight mules and we you know we're just like I'm just like a backcountry hunter like yeah, yeah. I don't do like the real cowgirl stuff so I always look up to real cowgirls I'm like oh man you know how to rope you know how to do these things and I I think it's very cool um, yeah. I just wasn't raised with it you know yeah, no, so and. Yeah, we all have our own path on that, but the mounted shooting on horseback is pretty dope yeah. looking. It looks awesome. Like, it looks fun to me. Oh, like, yeah. I'm like, oh, it mixes like two things I that really love. love doing, and I'm like, it seems like it would be a lot of fun and like a, a kind of a hard skill to mm -hmm. learn at first. Yeah. So, and there's a ton of it in Arizona. Like a few, uh, I follow oh, yeah. a few people, like women there who yeah. do it and are like top of like world championships mm -hmm. and they live in Arizona. So mm -hmm. I'm like, dang, at least there's like a community I could mm -hmm. get involved in. So where do you like to shoot in Arizona? Um, I shoot at a range called Rio Salado. Okay. It's uh, up near like Usury, like um, outside of Phoenix okay. a bit. Yeah. They have a ton of matches there. So. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I've only been to a couple ranges there. I've been to Gunsight down there and okay. that was really fun. Yeah. They got a, a bunch of ranges mm -hmm. there. Phoenix oh, is sure. actually really big. <laughs> Well, and because the weather is nice in the winter, there's a lot yeah. of people that will snowbird and go down there because oh, yeah. they want to be able to shoot and do things year round. Like in Wyoming, where we live, it yeah. was minus 30 last week. Yeah. I am not shooting outside when it's minus 30. Not happening. Yeah, I don't think you get anyone to go outside and shoot in minus 30. No, but you were also talking about you want to start hunting. Uh, I started hunting the last couple years. I have not filled any big tags. Um, I went elk hunting in Colorado with just archery. I've just yeah. been doing archery right now. Um, I went well. I did. I went on a bear hunt in Idaho, and I've done like whitetail in Missouri. Um, in Arizona, I put in for tags last year, but I didn't get any. Yeah. And I literally just put in for elk in Arizona nice. today, right before this. So we'll see. I know it's really hard to get tags for elk there, but I put in for for bull. But if you're a resident, I think it's a little easier. I don't know. I have clients who are like, yeah, this is my 11th year and I haven't pulled a tag yet. I think it depends where they go to. Yeah, I think they're trying to get yeah, like, the they have over the counter archery in August for I think deer. So I'm going to do that if I don't get like an elk tag yeah. at least. Um, and I have a, actually I'm supposed to do a javelina hunt when I get home. I have like no time, but I might like drive up one day and Girl, just see if I, I see hear it. you. <laughs> You're like, I'm getting ready to go to South Africa and I'm going to go hunting also and yeah. I'm going to do this and I'm going to I know, that's lot. what I'm saying. Like, I have like no, no time, time to do anything. So, uh, and you just got this great dog. I did. I know. And she's, she's in training? Yeah, she's in training. Yeah, she's a, so it's usually like a two year ish training program for them because she's going to be a protection dog. Yeah. So she's, um, her obedience is great. She's really good. She's just, uh, she's still a puppy. She's young. Yeah, she's a baby. Yeah. <laughs> she's Was she a rescue failure? 
No, no, she wasn't. No, she I got wasn't. her like brand new. Okay. Um, yeah, from a company. Um, we talked a lot about types of dogs that I could, for what I wanted. I just like have an active lifestyle and like I want to be able to take her like hiking and out yeah. and doing other things. Yeah. So, and they were like, okay, we think we have a good dog for you. She comes from a good breed, and I'm mm-hmm. like, okay. I have a friend who he just got a dog, and it um, it was in the program, a canine production program, but it had. Um, it broke its leg Aww. or did something to its leg and he they said well look this dog has years worth of training if you pay for its surgery you can have it and and um it's a really cool story because he's an amputee combat wounded Aww. veteran and so he like rescued this dog and got her surgery and they're like buddies now and it's it's a cool st- like i love that it makes my heart happy and it's the same breed yeah oh yeah does he get a malinois or yes. a dutch shepherd yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so awesome. I, well i'm not sure which one it is they're the same very similar thing. Yeah. um but it looks just like yours and yeah. it's a it's a great story and a good fit for for the dog yeah. and for yancy yeah, like, that's it's so, awesome i love yeah. like symmetry like that yeah. that's so cool yeah Aww. no it's really awesome and these dogs have such a servant heart i mean yeah. that's how they end up in the protection world and they're so smart yeah like oh, yeah. they t- love to work like yeah. that's when she's like her happiest is when mm-hmm. she's like working like yeah. she really loves it and uh, so what does that mean for her training you know you're when you're when you're out doing your traveling she's yeah. in school yeah so that's what we kind of worked out a, a deal for like this first beginning while she's still getting trained is like I already knew that I travel a lot and my goal is to like I take her to, with me to work yeah and I take her with me when I go places but like out of the country we have worked it out where he'll the company will pick her up and take her and board her and train her while I'm gone mm-hmm. so it works out great that she's like with people I trust um, she's yeah. being socialized and worked and trained so she's like has the best possible like situation while I'm gone Mm -hmm. and then I get to bring her back home when I get home and it Mm -hmm. it works out really great it's really great yeah Yeah, it's like the perfect situation because I wasn't going to get a dog if I knew that I didn't have that I I was like I haven't had a dog for a really long time because I do travel a lot and work long days and I didn't want it to be unfair where they're just like cooped up all the time Mm -hmm. so this way she gets to come with me and she goes to a good place when I can't take her with me so it works out yeah no it's a long process it's a lot of training and they actually have a huge vocabulary yeah all of her stuff is in like dutch and and german commands so yogi will understand (laughs) but uh i i uh i found this chihuahua one time it was lost and um i was at a hunting camp and um i spent a week like trying to be friends with this little chihuahua (laughs) And my cameraman, he was so funny. He was like, um, yeah, I was like, come here, little dog. Come here, little dog, trying to catch it. And he's like, Christy, don't you know the dog does not speak English? It speaks Spanish. Oh. And I'm like, that's that's a very valid point right now. And your dog speaks German. My husband speaks German. So I can't speak to your dog, but my husband can. And I couldn't speak to that little oh dog. It knows Spanish. Like, And I swear to God, the little dog knew Spanish. Yeah. And I had no idea. And I, we finally amazing. got it caught. But it's it's a thing. Like, you don't know what commands people train their dog in yeah. what language. I think that's kind of the point. Like, at least with working dogs, that's so why they do it. So somebody can't tell you. They'd be your like, dog. stop. And they stop. Like, you say it in another language. Yeah. That and way. then, yeah. 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 Like, Platz is sit or something yeah, like that. Yeah, in German. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she's seat, mm. so hers is Dutch. Mm-hmm. She's not listening. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's it's asleep. crazy, yeah. No, that's great, and, and then it keeps, like, everybody else from just telling your dog what to do. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 There are a lot of Americans that understand the value of hunting, but we all know that right now, national support of hunting is extremely volatile. It seems that with every passing day, our voice is diminished and the court of public opinion is not effectively hearing our side. We need advocates working on our behalf in Washington, D.C. to defend our freedom to hunt. And thankfully, when we need it the most, we have that advocate in Safari Club International. SCI's world headquarters are located in Washington, D.C., just blocks from the United States Capitol, which means that SCI is on the ground with our congressional leaders and federal agencies on our behalf, on behalf of the hunting community. SCI has an active political presence in all 50 states through their extensive chapter network and government affairs staff. If you have ever wondered why you should be a member of SCI, you shouldn't wonder anymore. Join us in the fight to defend hunting. Go to safariclub.org to learn more. Uh, when did you get her? Uh, I mean, I got her, like, she was, like, eight 
weeks ish when uh, I first oh, got Oh, she was a tiny she was puppy. Little, yeah. And but I lived in Missouri at the time and the the company I got her from is based in Missouri. Yeah. So it was really easy that like um, I could have her at home or we could have her there and I it was like twenty minutes away. Yeah. So that first like six months to a year she was in Missouri and like sometimes she'll go back there now, which is nice. And then you would just go visit her. Yeah. Yep. Wow, that's like a serious commitment in training. Yeah, it is. Like a lot. That's like a very, it's like uh, my kid's in boarding school. Yeah, literally. For literally. Like, for a couple years. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome though. She's going to be like the best, the best yeah. of everything. And I'm sure she gets so sad when you're not around though yeah. and you leave her. She's very She like, has separation anxiety. It's mm -hmm. a problem. <laughs> my Ridgeback, he howls like a fool yeah. when I'm not around. And my husband gets so annoyed. He's like, that dog's howling again. <laughs> She doesn't feel like when I go to the bathroom, like I close the door and she loses her mind. Like, really? Let me in. Yeah. She, she wants the door open. Oh, yeah. She wants to be on my lap. <laughs> oh, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. She's a couch dog. Yeah. yeah. We're working on it. What do you mean? Like her not being on the couch. Oh, because you kind of yeah. want her on the couch, but she's not supposed to be on the couch. Yeah. She's like, because she's, when she's working, like we work, it's trying to find like a happy balance because she's like a home protection dog. She's not like a police dog. So, or in the military or anything like that. So like a little healthy balance of her being like a working dog and a pet. It's hard to find that sometimes. So, because uh, you can't give them too much freedom. Otherwise they get lazy. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Okay. Yeah, like yeah. they'll yeah they'll get lazy or they'll like stop listening to you as much when you give them all that freedom. So like most of the time, I try to keep her like pretty disciplined. Like this is where you go. This is what you do. So the training mostly is for you. Uh, I have to do training too. Yeah. <laughs> well, Absolutely. yeah, I would think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was like, it was a learning curve for both of us. Like, yeah. To make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to make sure that you know what to do and, yeah. she, and she knows what to yeah, do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, that's intense. That's pretty awesome. I love that journey and that you're doing that. And, um, that she's like, just so chill. So yeah. let's talk about your art. Okay. You're an artist. I am an artist. How did you discover you were an artist? Oh gosh. Um, I always just like tell people like whenever, like I don't know how old you were when you started like coloring as a yeah. kid, I just didn't stop. <laughs> so like I just started drawing when I was little and really liked it. And then um, yeah, as I got older, like in high school, I fell out of like caring as yeah. much. And then I got to college and I started drawing and painting again. And I was like, I think this might be something I'd want to do with my life. Like I like the idea of having some freedom, but it's hard to know. Mm. Like and being an artist is really difficult. Like to be successful as an artist as a career path, um, it's not an easy route and um, not everyone makes it so yeah. um, I had to think long and hard about that and like be able to put in the work yeah to, like it's just so difficult so mm -hmm. um, yeah I've been was started tattooing or started my apprenticeship when I was 19 and I've been tattooing for gosh over 10 years now yeah and then I just started painting again and like that's kind of what I want to start doing more so is uh just oil painting yeah. and trying to get into galleries so I haven't done a lot of that yet no but I did see you did some bison yes and I was I was following and in, in, in uh we you know the buyer on that I do. but that was there was beautiful you do beautiful oh, artwork thank but you also you you know you artwork on human bodies like yeah. tattoos that's like a for real deal you don't want to be like whoops sorry about that bro <laughs> i mean when you start that's kind of the case yeah <laughs> yeah no, no one's good when they start tattooing so it's so you a, just find people that are like eh, it's fine you'd be surprised like when you tell people it's free they're like hell yeah brother like let's do this and i'm like you know it's not going to be good and they're like i heard free and i'm like okay okay you're like okay let's <laughs> yeah, try all right yeah <laughs> That's how, how, that's how it is. Like when, I'm, when I started, I told people, I'm like, hey, I'm doing like free tattoos. I'm learning. I don't know what I'm doing yet. So like if you're if you're willing and people, there's so many people, like way more people than I would have ever imagined. I would never get tattooed by someone who's doing free tattoos. You're like, if so, it's free, I'm not doing yeah. it. Oh, even people, some people who charge, I'm like, don't do it. That is so funny. <laughs> so you've been doing that for how long now? Um, so my I started my apprenticeship in 2010, 11. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like two year apprenticeship and then um, professionally tattooing since like 2013 uh, ish. So like almost 10, 11 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah a long time. It, so a long it time. seems like longer and shorter at the same time. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I can't believe I've been tattooing that long. And you have a beautiful studio. Thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, it is beautiful. I feel like I know her. I don't know her. <laughs> okay, let me just put this out there. We actually don't know each other. I know. But I know her because I follow her <laughs> online. I'm like, oh, your place is so beautiful and your dog is so cute. Social media is so weird yeah. that way. Like, you really do like get involved in people's yes. lives yeah. and then like feel like you I really feel like 
I've been moving a lot lately. Oh. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, did she just move again? I feel like I need to call you and be like, girl, what's going on? Anytime you want. Feel <laughs> like, free. Like, are hey. you really moving again? Because I feel like you just did move. Oh, that's true. I move all the time. <laughs> it's okay, though. But you do have a beautiful studio. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I f I'm, like, really happy with how it turned out because, like, the last studio I had got destroyed in a fire. So yeah. this one was kind of uh, That's rough. You've had yeah. some rough, yeah. like, hard knocks, you know? Yeah. A few. A few. Yeah. yeah. So I'm really happy with how this place turned out. I think it's even better and yeah. I'm really feels really good. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what I love about your social media, too? And this is you like open up to people and talk about like outward looking in. You're like a beautiful woman. And oh. and everybody, you know, everybody wants to be you. You oh, know what I mean? Like people I don't look think at that's you, true. But people look at you, they want to be like you, oh. you know, and and you share like, hey, you know, I yes, I, you know, you have this beautiful exterior, but you're like, look, I've had a lot of things go on and I've had my own struggles. We've yeah. all had a struggle. And, and for somebody like outside looking into you, I love how you open up your heart and your world and, you know, some of the challenges that you've been through in life. And it makes everybody, you know, we all feel like, OK, I'm normal. Yeah. All right. I could take a deep breath because this girl's not, you know, some people want to portray that this perfection and this unflawed facade and yeah. and you you keep it so real and and i think oh. the people that do follow you really appreciate that myself oh. included oh well thank you i really appreciate that yeah it's I feel true like one of the things i kind of hated about social media for or just life in general is that people like feel like they have to be perfect all the time yeah. and no one is but like for me growing up like most of my life like just dealing with like trauma and abuse I always felt so like alienated and alone mm -hmm. like I was the only person to understand what I was going through mm -hmm. when I started sharing it online um, all of this like just depression or, or trauma or survival all of that stuff like there were so many people who were yeah. like oh my gosh I felt like I was the only one or no one understood mm -hmm. and it's nice to see that there's other people out yeah. there and there's a ton of people who feel yes. that way yes. and I'm like why wouldn't you use your platform like I wish I would have seen someone doing that when I was younger yeah. and I feel like it's getting better I feel like there's more people willing mm -hmm. to share like their hardships and not just their wins yeah and I think that's really important so I don't know if it ever I'm like I don't know if it actually helps anyone but I feel like if it helps one person that's nice and yeah um so Thank you. For yeah, no, it's it's important that everybody, you know, again, it's especially for young girls. Yeah. Because young girls, you know, when you're growing up and you have all these like young girl hormones going on and, and you look at all these women and filters and all this stuff that's mm -hmm. online that's not necessarily real, it's hard to understand that like it's not always... I mean, we put our best foot forward on social media. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a highlight reel. It's a you. highlight. It's a highlight, yeah. but we all have stuff, and, and it makes you feel just a little more human and normal, and it's good yeah. that you share that. And I don't, you know, I don't share, I guess, maybe too much of that sort of thing, yeah. you know, if I'm having whatever, but yeah. a little bit. I mean, I try to share my personal life. You know, I've had struggles with weight my whole life, and, like, I share some of that with my audience, too, yeah. of, like, going through being an athlete versus not and you yeah. know it's a lot like it's it there's is. a lot um there's a lot of people that you know get inspiration from that too you know yeah I feel like it helps when people know like oh like like struggle is normal like everyone's yeah. gonna struggle and like mm -hmm. you can choose different struggles what, and or, how you handle it and how you handle it yeah. and I feel like when people make it seem like oh I just never struggle this is so easy like it makes it for the people who are struggling like what the fuck is wrong with me yeah what am I yeah. doing like, wrong <laughs> like why is this so okay. hard yeah and so I'm like I don't really like that I'm like it's hard for everyone they're just yeah. like some people are probably lying about it yeah 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 and success comes with discipline and commitment absolutely you know everything that you're doing in your life from from shooting to your artwork to even your travel work yeah. now I mean you you have to have discipline and you have committed to things and to where you've mastered them you know oh, I don't know if that's the case I feel like well, I'm always just trying to like just do better yeah like with everything I never yeah. feel like I'm like doing my best but I'm always trying my best yeah yeah so I like that yeah yeah I like that and it's mind over matter it's it's keeping going it's persevering yeah. it's not quitting it's when there's a naysayer out there that wants to smack you around and you're like okay yeah I got this I'm yeah. gonna keep going and and learning how to overcome 
any challenge. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like there's always like a voice in my head that's like telling me like, oh, you should quit or not do this or like, yeah. I don't know, like growing up, um, like just the things that you were told that like stick with you sometimes. And I just like constantly like, nope, that's not real. That's right. <laughs> like I have control over this. Yeah. Like I can choose to either yeah. like let that get to me or I can not and I can mm -hmm. just keep pushing forward and, yeah. and do what I can. So Well, you work hard, lady. I try. Like, I mean, I really that's try. one thing about it is success usually comes in the form of work yeah, and you're working and, and you wouldn't be where you're at today if you weren't working hard and yeah. putting out the effort and yeah. trying. I feel like too when like you're doing everything by yourself you have to work extra hard because no one's there Ugh. to like pick up the slack so yeah. you have to make it work otherwise yeah. you're gonna fail immediately so like that's always just been my mentality I'm like there's no one else to do this so if you don't do it who's gonna do it? Yeah. Well, it's nice now that I got married. I don't have to get my coffee yeah. anymore. So that's like, if I don't do this, my husband will get my coffee. That's yeah. nice. It's nice having a that is it. Honestly, that is nice. yeah. yeah, I like that idea. Yeah. I'm yeah. Like, yeah so I'm, I'm on like, board for that. But it yeah. is crazy because my, you know, I was we we were 41 when we got married. I was yeah. 41 when we got married, or 40, 40. I don't know. Whatever. Something like that. I won't say how old I really am. But it's been a little while since we got married, and um. But I, before my husband, I did everything myself. Yeah. Like, I was responsible for everything. And now I have his help. It's such a relief and a blessing. Um, you know, he's behind the camera right now, running yeah. the camera. He's making sure everything's going. Everything's recording. Batteries are charged. I mean, <laughs> like, it's it's nice to have help. And I, and I feel like being independent. Yeah. Sometimes I have a hard time letting him oh, yeah. help me. No, no. And he gets so mad at me. He's like, why are you freaking so hard headed just let me help you like yeah. back off and I'm like I got this I don't need your help and it's so when you're when you're a yeah. doer it's hard to let people do for yeah. you oh absolutely and I would imagine yeah you're probably that way too yeah yeah my boyfriend and I are like I've only been together like a year and he's always offering to help yeah. like like bless his heart he's yeah. seriously like just the most supportive person yeah. like same thing he's like let me help you do this I yeah. can do this and I'm like I'm like oh yeah I was like but I can do it and he was like yeah but you don't have to and I'm like oh yeah that's new yes, <laughs> like, thank you. what yeah thank like you. that's kind of yeah, nice I'm still great. not used to it so I'll just start doing it on my own he's like I offered to I can help yeah. and I'm like oh yeah that's right but you're not offering to let him be your travel photographer uh, I'm, no, he, I mean, he just doesn't really know how to use a camera yet. It's We're harder. working on it. It is harder. It's harder. <laughs> We're like, working on it. I'm, like you, you keep, I'm like, you keep cutting my feet off. No. <laughs> just get my fucking She <laughs> has feet, okay? People need to see them. Her only fans is for feet uh, only. Oh, uh, dude, that yeah. makes way more money. I, I know. Quit, I could quit doing everything if I wanted to do that. <laughs> I know. No, I'm it's like, so fun. Yeah. I was totally joking about the only fans. This is a joke with my husband and I that he has that and does feet. I tell, I tell my boyfriend, I'm like, if you want to do it at any point i'll support you 100 you want to sell feet pigs that's or right whatever i'll i'll hail you i'll yeah. help you yeah no that's so funny <laughs> oh. but i get what you're saying because he helps me a lot with my my husband helps me a lot with my business and he runs the cameras but then i'm like when it comes to photography i'm like <laughs> i love you but the iphone photos only get us so yeah. far you know yeah. like there's just a different look yeah. you know and so i still hire a uh, you know cameraman and a lot and plus Plus, it's hard on a marriage. Like, oh yeah, him working for me full time, we might divorce. Oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's there's a fine line with like living together, loving each other, and working full time absolutely. together. You I know? Can, yeah. Like, it's good to have balance, work life balance. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a blessing. I love my husband. He does a great job, but not full time. Full time. Yeah. <laughs> He's not getting paid today either, so oh. there's also that. But I will buy him dinner oh, that's at the free nice. banquet we're going to tonight. Free, yeah. I, I'll, anything you want, babe. <laughs> anything you want. You. I got a free dinner lined up for you and a free lunch in the back. It's all good. I'm going to take care of you. Oh, Don't my you gosh, worry. That's amazing. <laughs> It's fun. Now, how does everybody follow you? If they want to follow along on like what you're doing in shooting sports with your dog, with your traveling with your journey into becoming a ranch owner eventually and having horses <laughs> if you need some baby donkeys let me know i'll hook oh, you up yeah. uh, <laughs> i, I want some uh, but yeah no how can people follow you uh so i just mostly use instagram right now so i have two separate instagrams i have like my personal one that's like traveling and shooting mm -hmm. it's marissa dot loren i believe mm -hmm. and then my artist page um is marissa loren art okay yep that's and where you can and find uh, me. are you going to turn into a YouTuber anytime soon? Or? <sighs> 
I want, I want to start a podcast. I've actually been thinking about it. So I would do video and then maybe YouTube. I just need help. But now that I have, like, my boyfriend is offered. Yeah. And uh, I talked to my my photographer friend about, yeah. like, helping out. So maybe. Yeah. I just need help. I can't do it on my own. No, I can't be can't. a vloggy person. Yeah. I hate it. I don't want to be, like with in my phone in my face all the time i just want to like experience things and so we'll see maybe down the road <laughs> yeah well you guys i invite you to check her out and follow her journey and she's got so many awesome things she's doing and i'm so glad that you took the time out of this oh crazy gosh. shot show schedule to like come sit down and share your world a little bit with our viewers and hopefully you pick yeah. up some followers from yeah. it and oh. um and great, gain some traction on what you're doing in the world, which is already oh, awesome. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for watching and for tuning into this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. Thank our sponsors. We got Ruger, we got SCI, we got Onyx Hunt. You guys check them out. Go to my website, pursuethewild.com. If you're looking for some videos to watch, check out my video reels or go to my discount page and we're going to hook you up with some discounts. I want you guys to get the best deals you can on gear that matters. So check it out and thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. All right, we'll see you next time. Hey, you guys, if you're like me, you are totally dependent on OnX Hunt for nearly everything from hunting, navigating backcountry roads, even real estate. But being an elite member with OnX has so many benefits that you guys are going to want to take advantage of if you're not already doing so. For example, you're going to have access to all 50 states plus Canada with tons of valuable resource, landowner information, and you're also going to get added benefits like draw odds with top ret that will help you with all of your application seasons and benefits through hunting full magazine and to boot you guys they've got tons of great specials through partners like silencer central where if you're an on x elite member you really benefit from those partnerships so if you guys aren't a member i encourage you go online to the on x hunt website use code wild 20 at checkout and you're going to save 20 percent you're going to love being being an Onyx Hunt Elite member. Hey, you guys, thank you for joining us for this episode of the Wild Nud Cut Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Titus. We are at the Ruger booth at the 2024 SHOT Show, and I'm here with my new friend, Reginald Daggett, and we're breaking him in like full scale on this SHOT Show. <laughs> this is his first SHOT Show, and I was just saying it's my 14th. Maybe 15th. I'm losing track. Right, so many. Uh, welcome to the insanity. It's literally like um, a, a feast of firearms and gadgets. Yeah, it, gear, gadgets, firearms, just everything. I even saw the Under Armour booth. Yeah, everybody's like, here. Everybody's here. Everybody. Like, when I first walked in, I was telling you, I walked past the Glock booth, and I was just like, I'm going oh, to the Ruger booth. I'm going to keep walking. My <laughs> God. <laughs> The biggest booth I've ever seen in yeah. a trade show. Just massive. Like, it's as big and as lit up and as lit, like, just, it looks like a freaking star yeah. over there. Well, it's the so booths big. here yeah. are like houses yeah. indoors. And this Ruger booth is crazy. There's it's, so many people in here. Yeah, it's, it's it is like this all the time. It oh is so God. busy. It yeah. is. And how do your feet, how are your feet holding up? Um, I'm at. 7,500 steps. Oh, and I got you're baby stepping I got, today. I got here at uh, 11. Yeah, yeah, I was going to so say. I've only been here a couple hours. And yeah, I'm already you, at you just wait. Stuff. So yeah. my girlfriends and I did a SHOT Show hack, uh, some tips last night. Nice. So I'll give you some of the, the yeah, points give me of some advice. Of those. Give me some of those. So the first thing is when you get back to your in-between events, okay. lay on your bed and put your feet up Got on it. the headboard. Okay. And just like get the blood flow out of <laughs> your right, ankles because right, you're going right. to end up with cankles. <laughs> Like, this is the thing. You're going to be like, whoa, what is Yo. going on here? It's like, my leg is doubled in size. You think? Do you think I could really do 20,000 steps today? Oh, 100%. What? 100%. Yeah. I'm That's like, nuts. Oh, yeah. You, my friend did like 16 or 18,000 yesterday. Oh, my God. Maybe you have to start earlier. Okay, right, 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 but, right. But, right, I mean, right. you just. Definitely tomorrow. So, sure. we know what Reginald was doing last night because he was here at 11. <laughs> Okay. Also, that leads me to number two, Shaw Show hack. Nothing good happens after midnight. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I mean, my mom used to say that. Yeah. <laughs> my mom still says that shit. Well, I'm older than you, right. so I can be your mom right now. Uh, but that is true. Like, seriously. But actually, a lot of business is done after midnight. Okay. But that was always my joke when I was single before I was married. Right, I was right, like, right. At, at midnight at Shaw Show, 
this girl needs to be getting in that elevator and going right. to bed going to because sleep. The, yep. the optic changes like the look of like this turns into this <laughs> from people and it's like right. there's a sheen that yeah, goes yeah, yeah. over the kind eyes of, kind of a zombie sheen yeah you when you see saying? that it's right. time to go right 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 those are my top two best Got and it. then drink water Got to drink water. Bring okay. electrolytes okay. and uh, drink Got some it. water. Eat food. Okay. Okay. Uh, we bring protein bars and snacks. Nice. Those are good. Those are yeah, good. Yeah. You'll find it. You, food. They want you to get lost in here. Really? Yeah. They I don't do. Want to you get lost you in can't here. find your way around. You're I like, could. Where am I, I could at? get lost. Is this in here front for or sure. back? Yeah. And you think you're going one direction. You realize you've just right. gone, you know, five rows the wrong way. Oh man. So. I need a map. Do you have a map? No, I, they have an app. The, okay, I did download the app. They when have I got an app. Here. I don't. Okay, so I'll I don't start have using that. I'll start I don't use that. it. I've been here so many times. Yeah. Like the nice thing is a lot of these booths they anchor and okay. then they just stay they and just then stay you know where to spot. find them. Over okay, here. Cool, cool. It's cool, the cool. smaller ones that you know kind of cycle around. Okay, but, got um, it. So Makes you sense. you have a military background. Yes. So what yes. branch? Tell me about that. I was in the Air Force. Okay. Military police. Uh, joined when I was 21, 2006. Okay. I was in Afghanistan 2006-2007, uh, military police, um, and then overseas we did, at Bagram, we did base defense. Okay. So, yeah, that's my uh, very short military career. How right? many years were you in? Just two. It okay. was called the National Call to Service okay. um, contract. It was only a two-year yeah. contract, but I had to do four years in the Guard. Okay. So I got out and then did four years in the uh, Army National Guard. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for your service. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out... How we found each other online. <laughs> ah. So, so here it is. He might have slid into my DM. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did after. I did. After, I'm just after, teasing. After, I'm after, teasing. After. I'm teasing. So, I've been doing uh, tactical content creation for a while, for yeah. like the last four years, right? So, that's kind of been my bread and butter. Well, yeah, and I want to talk yeah. about that because you look like seriously <laughs> legit on your page. I'm like, holy smokes. Thank this you. guy's all kidded out. He's all, ah, running this gun. I'm like, whoa. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, how I found you was I'm starting to get into fishing, hunting, yeah. that sort of thing. So, it's been about maybe four or five months, and I kind of just went through a bunch of IGs of people that, you know, were in the hunting yeah. and fishing space. And I just started following, 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 just to kind of, you know, just start getting those, yeah. those, uh, that content to my feed. Mm -hmm. That way, you know, you know, for motivation yeah. and different things like that. So, um, um, so yeah, I just started following. And then I, I saw one of your posts of you hunting. I, I think you were in Wyoming or wherever you were at. It's hard to say. You, I mean, you were, I mean, I was just like, man, like that looks awesome. Yeah. Like I really want to start doing some more hunting and going out glassing and different things like mm -hmm. that. So, yeah, that's how I found your page. And I reached out. I do I do a, a, a gun versus gun uh, series on my, yeah. on my, on my post. We on my, did yeah. a collaboration. Yeah, we did a collab. With archery. Right, right. It was my first, you know, kind of bow versus bow. It was bow. my bear right? against your, was that a Matthews? Uh, uh, diamond. Diamond. Diamond, okay. yeah, diamond. All right. And typically people like the gun versus gun thing. Like, I've gotten really, really good feedback. And because really everybody's going to tell you how what you have isn't exactly, great. Exactly. They, exactly. they like to chime in. We've got all the Karens or, out there. Or they have something better. Yes. Or you should have put this on your bow or this use this optic instead. Like, it's a whole thing. I do it for engagement yeah, and yeah, get yeah. people talking and stuff. But, yeah. So That's yeah, what that's we pretty, did. Yeah, we did that. We did. I won. Okay. I just she wanted to. She did win. <laughs> Her, her bow was so kitted out, it was crazy. It was, I, had a, I have a very nice bow, and it's got very nice technology. Right. My bear archery bow. I love bear. We love you, bear. We love you, bear. Um, but yeah, I no. actually collabed with them on there, so Did hopefully you? they'll reach out yeah. and hit the collab button on that. Yeah, that yeah. would be awesome. That would be awesome. Hopefully they do. Yeah. And um, So you you went to the military. Were you into shooting sports? Are you into no, shooting sports? No, no. So I didn't start shooting uh, until maybe about four years ago. I was in the fitness industry. I was kind of a fitness buff before, and I was like, I'm kind of bored with this. I want something that's a little bit more adrenaline thing. So a buddy of mine took me out shooting. So you were like men's physique, like posing yeah, on stage. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was you just like. You guys Google this. <laughs> Because there, no there, <laughs> there will be there will be pictures no. online, and I know this no. because I did figure, and I have pictures online. I know if we Google you, we're now going to see I'll you. Were you in any. the speedo or were you in the? No, shorts? I wasn't in the speedo. I was just in shorts. Right, this yeah, we're yeah, going to yeah, take yeah. the rails off of this yeah, one today. Okay, <laughs> so anyway, so you got into fitness and you were like over it. And yeah, I was over it, you know, and it was just so much work, like trying to keep the body fat down and yeah. eat the right way and all that sort of stuff. And so I told my wife, I was like, look, I was like, I want to do something else. I was like, I want a different hobby. 
so she's like, why don't you go out shooting with uh, with uh, with this guy? And I was like, okay, cool. So he takes me out shooting. Your wife set you up on a mandate. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. And he great. bought everything, Uzis. AKs, like he had everything, and I just kind of fell in love with it yeah. after that. So you've been over to my friends at Century Arms' booze and seeing their AKs. No, I have not. you got to get over there not. and do that, too. I'll do that. Yeah. I'll do that. So he, uh, he takes me out, go shooting. I bought my first gun, Smith & Wesson SD9. I'm not a huge fan, but it was my first gun. Um, and I just went out 4 o'clock in the morning, Saturday, Sunday mornings, and yeah. I just started putting rounds on range. Yeah. Um, and I just, like I said, I just fell in love with it. Bought my, my wife bought me my first rifle. It was a little AR-9, yeah, 16-inch. Started training with that, fell in love with it, and then I just started buying more stuff, buying yeah. more stuff and training more. And After the, the first two years, I was like, okay, you know what? Let me stop buying guns and let me just buy ammo and just focus on being proficient and just knowing what I'm doing. Yeah. So I, I started doing that, and then I started posting. And at first I was just posting just because I'm just going to put this stuff out there. If I get some good critique, great. If not cool you know mm -hmm. what i mean and it just kind of blew up after that you know um so you have it, a youtube channel now yeah i just started the youtube channel probably about six months ago i'm just doing shorts right now yeah um but i do have uh some long form content kind of in the works yeah podcast is coming um i used to do a fitness podcast back in the day um on spotify apple music um, or on apple podcast it's still up there if you want to go check it out reginald fitness radio um, oh, plug in. I yeah, like it. But yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's going to, you know, I'm just trying to branch out now. Hunting, yeah. fishing. Um, yeah, I just want to dip my toe in, in, in it all. That's so, yeah. awesome. So when you guys go onto his page, you have some stuff where you're like doing some super fast shooting. Yeah. yeah. Like you're fast. Talk I'm, about that. I'm, I'm, I, I, I think I'm a intermediate to advanced shooter. Right. I train a lot. I train probably three or four times a week. So talk about that. Thank what do you, you do babe. training? Um, thank you, babe, for allowing me to train that much and, You're and buy wife. that much ammo. Yeah, she's great. She's 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 amazing. Um, you know what? I watch other guys and I try to mimic what other guys are doing. Yeah. Right. And then once I see a concept, whether it be a competition shooter or a tactical shooter, I go out to the range and I just do what they're hundred doing. reps yeah. of what they're doing. Yeah. Are you and, doing you know, it all with live fire or are you doing dry fire too? Um, so I, I don't dry fire as much as I should. Yeah. And I don't because I'm on the range probably two, three times a week. You have a wonderful wife. Yeah. Your wife is a saint. Yeah. And I'm, 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 I'm probably going through a thousand rounds of five, five, six a month. Uh, probably another 700 rounds of nine millimeter. So she I love has my a wife second so job. <laughs> <laughs> I love my wife so much, man. She allows me to train and, yeah. you know, takes care of the kids. And mm -hmm. she's awesome. It she's does take awesome. a team. When conditions get tough on a mountain hunt, your gear must be tougher. Making every opportunity count means selecting equipment that will not fail. Any condition, anywhere. Hornady Outfitter Ammunition is designed to perform. Available in a wide range of cartridges from 243 to 375 Ruger. When you're looking for a hard hitting, deep penetrating bullet and cartridge that performs in the most rugged environments, look no further than Hornady Outfitter Ammunition. afford that much ammo and how do you get that much ammo because there's people out there that are watching and they're like look um uh, i don't know where do you buy this <laughs> i mean like, it's crazy. like the ammo is like it's hard to do that so early on and this is this is pandemic are you reloading? days no i'm not reloading. okay this is pandemic days i learned I, I learned real quick that police officers get stashes of ammo yeah issued them to them from their police departments okay after a while they need to cycle that ammo out of their safes. Okay. Right? So I buy from cops. Ah. Right? I buy from cops pretty, pretty often. Um, another one. I wish these guys would reach out to me because I've been plugging them so much. Hello. AmmoSeek.com. AmmoSeek.com is just like a, it's like a portal for buying ammo. It's amazing. Right? You just put in your, uh, your caliber. What you're searching for. What you're searching for. Press search. And it just brings up just all types of dealers and stuff yeah. selling ammo uh you could buy in bulk or you can buy you know five boxes or yeah. whatever you want 
I stay on AmmoSeek.com. I probably refresh it probably three or four times a day looking for deals and sourcing deals. Really? So, yeah. so that's um, that's all really interesting advice, yeah. and I have not used that philosophy before because I always hear people, oh, you got to start reloading, and you got to do no, this and that. And no, too much work. I was going to say, work. I don't have... Yeah, I don't have reloading's time another hobby. It is. A, it's another it's an art. Also. Yeah, it's an art. It's another hobby that I don't really have time for. Like I'd rather be on the range, just mm -hmm. you know, putting mm -hmm. rounds on range. So yeah. yeah. So you do a lot of speed work. Mm -hmm. You're doing a lot of three gun also. Yes. Yes. Well, I don't shoot shotgun. Really. You don't. But you're yeah. not doing any multi discipline like that. You. So it's just rifle. Rifle pistol. pistol. Yeah. Okay. Mostly. Mostly. Yep. 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 So talk about that. What do you like to do? What is your, um, what's your game? <sighs> I like fundamental stuff. I like teaching fundamentals. I teach. Um, You're you know, an instructor. Yeah, I am an instructor. Okay. Um, I teach uh, throughout the week. So how do people find you to, in to if they want to go get instruction instructed from you? Reginald you? Justin official on Instagram. That's the easiest and fastest way to uh, hit me up. Um, Only Firearms uh, YouTube channel, and uh, those are pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So those they are. have to go through your Instagram to, yeah. to get training. Yeah. And the, the reason why I do that okay. is because. People are very, very visual. Yeah. You know, if they see that you know what you're doing and they see that you can shoot, yeah. then they're more inclined to Well, they want to shoot with up. people that are competent. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I'm, and I'm kind of there now, too. Like, I feel like once I got to a certain level, yeah. I want to see other guys that are better than me. I want to see how they shoot. That way I can be like, oh, okay, that's what I need to be doing. Or maybe I should train with that guy. Or maybe I should train with that guy. Or maybe I should be running yeah. this gear or that gear. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. And it's exactly. interesting, like, um, we, I just had Doug Koenig on, and he was talking about so much of his training is actually fitness. Yeah. It's what he eats, it's how he moves his body and trains his body and, and he has like so much discipline. Mm -hmm. Like he has an in season workout and food protocol and an off season workout and food protocol. And it's really like treating your body like it, well it's an extension of, of your performance. It yeah. is your performance. See here's and here's what I realized. I, I should have known this, but Running guns and running gear, your fitness has to be top notch, yeah. right? Because you're you're carrying this rifle or you got this plate carrier on, you're adding more weight to your yeah. being, right? So you have to be physically fit in order to support all this stuff that you're carrying, yeah. you know? Sometimes I run a rig, sometimes I don't, but when I do run a rig and I haven't, you know, put in those push-ups or those sit-ups or I didn't take my, my, uh, my gym workout seriously, I feel it. Yeah. I get winded, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's so hard to manage your sight picture. It is, mm -hmm. it is, it is, it is. I have the same thing. We, I, You really have to pay attention, like, in cold weather, like when you're mm -hmm. archery hunting. Right. Like, I was in Missouri, <clears throat> and I was running 58-pound draw on my bow okay. all elk season. It's warm. And I got in the tree, and I drew on this deer, and I was like, Ugh, right. Ugh, ee, ee. <laughs> And I got my bow pulled over, and I was like, oh, dang, that hurt. Wow. And I So, and... I, I got busted on that particular deer, but yeah. the, I went back to the house and I dropped a poundage on my bow, eight pounds. Oh wow! Because it, it, you when you're sitting there in the cold, yeah. your muscles tense up, tense up, and it's hard to move. You lose so much strength. Yeah, um, and that's where conditioning is so important. Right, and right, right. as much as I work out and I try to stay fit and eat healthy, mm -hmm. there's also limitations with your body yeah. in, certain in certain environmental conditions. Yeah. And that's where training is everything. Like you're training, if you're training without, you know, without your plate carrier right. on, and then you put it on, how you perform is going to be different. It's how so you different. move, how you right. swing the gun, how you draw, all of these things are going to be different because you've changed one thing, everything changes. What I tell, what I tell people in my, in my rifle classes, I tell them, your recoil management of that, that rifle is going to be different when you have a plate carrier on versus you not having that plate carrier yeah. on, right? And when, you, when I've demonstrated it, if I don't have the plate carrier on, like, the gun stays in place, right? Mm -hmm. It's in my shoulder. It stays in place. But once I have that plate carrier on, it's going to move and bounce around. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that you need to, you need to, um, you need to, to practice and work on. Yeah to improve that recoil management when you have that brake carrier on. Mm -hmm. And it just takes reps, mm -hmm. reps, reps, reps. And I, I don't think enough guys put a lot of reps um, when, they're, when they're doing their, their tactical training. Like I do a lot of trainings throughout the week, and sometimes I go to trainings, and it's a lot of, it's a lot of standing around like yeah. talking shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or it's a lot of like half-assing the reps and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's like you have you a don't training have, plan. Yeah, you have to have a training plan first. And two, you have to execute that training plan because mm. you only got three or four hours to be out there. Yeah. Right? Like, I don't have eight hours to be out at the range. No, nobody right? does. I got, two, I got three boys, 
got a wife. My son is a year and a half. One of my sons is a year and a half. I got to get home. Yeah. Right? So from start to finish, I preload my mags. I, you know, make sure all my batteries are, are fresh. Like all the little things, right, to get started with training right when you get out to the range. Mm -hmm. That way all I got to do is set up targets, set up some barricades, you know, turn all the, you know, turn the optics on and I'm ready to go. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't waste time and you know, I'm I'm not really a perfectionist per se, but I'm definitely putting in the time to try to get better every mm -hmm. day. So So when you get home from the range, are you like cleaning your guns? Are you this guy no. that like instantly is like, I'm gonna clean everything and <laughs> I'm gonna no. put it back on the shelf and no. organize it? Or are you kind of no. a, a whirlwind? No, I I get home, I close the garage door and I just leave everything in the car, mm -hmm. in the garage. I grab my boys. He does. He does yeah. put his guns in the gun case or safe so that uh, you know if there was a home invasion, you'd have. Right, them. right, right. Well, I mean, I've got. I'm just. I got boxes. I was, I was I've got boxes thinking, around the house that, and yeah. stuff like that. But yeah, I just leave them in the car and I just play with my kids, you know. And then once the kids go to bed at like eight o'clock, then I'll take the guns out, start cleaning. Like after eight o'clock, nine o'clock, that's kind of like my zen time, two or three times yeah. a week to reload mags, clean guns, and just kind of be in the gun room, just be within myself. When my wife comes in, and it's like, "Are you done? Go away." I don't clean my guns no, very wait. often. <laughs> no? No, I mean, with for me, if, if I have moisture yeah, 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 in my yeah. rifle, I, I'll clean my guns. Right. But I'm not a big... I, I've, I, it's a zen time. It's, yeah, it, it really, really is. For me, it's For me, like, loading mags is like zen time. If I really? could watch a movie and then just load mags, oh, I would do that for the rest of my life. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. You have strong thumbs. I do. I yeah. do. So I you're do. you're shooting so much ammunition. Mm -hmm. You're going through so much and you're training so much. Yeah. Are you filming everything that you're doing? You should really so, film you <laughs> sitting on the couch doing that and be like, hey, <laughs> this is behind the scenes of what really like I show up at the range. I look all prepared. But this is yeah. really the work that goes into it. You know, you know what I, I started doing probably like a year, year and a half ago. I started filming myself. I, I really because I got tired of paying other people to come out and film me yeah because half the time um they weren't gun people yeah so they don't know really know the angles yeah. and different mm -hmm. things right if they were gun guys they weren't filming me how i wanted to be filmed, yeah right yeah. so i really had to buckle down yeah for six months i didn't shoot yeah i learned filming editing like most of the stuff you see on my instagram is all me editing my own stuff mm -hmm. it's because for six months i taught myself how yeah. to edit you yeah. know um, but yeah, I would say I probably have like 400 gigs of just footage yeah. over the last two years. And I, I try to film everything. I don't yeah. use everything, yeah. but I film yeah. everything. And sometimes I go back yeah. and I, you know, if I want a little six second clip or whatever, yeah. you know, like, oh, this would look good. Uh, it's from, you know, six months ago, but yeah. boom, throw it on Instagram, throw it on YouTube and hopefully it does well, you know, yeah. I'm shadow banned by the way, but that's okay. You know, that's why you collab with other people. That's it. That's how you get rid of the band, mm. shadow band. Collab with other people within your niche. That's how you grow. I, uh, I'm i also shadow banned, so uh, us collabing, hopefully it helps. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to do another one. I'm so shadow banned. Me we'll too. Have to do it's been like a year. A it's been a year since my shadow band. I haven't grown in two years on my IG. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's brutal. But we can. We should do We should do a collab again yeah. and, and make that happen. And um, I so want to come out to Wyoming and... and, and Bow hunt. I've got no. I've got a That's great gun range though. I Do mean, you? I've got a great pistol range. I've got a long range rifle range. Okay. I mean, it, I've got steel hung for a mile. Let's it's do awesome. it. It's awesome. I mean, it's, I've got a great range, and I'm working on it right now. Okay. We just moved, All and right. um, but yeah, I've got great reactive targets, and, awesome. and it's it's pretty. It's it's getting more awesome. I make I make some amazing. I smoke some amazing beef ribs. I like and eating pork ribs. Yeah, and pork is my favorite yeah. meat. So. Um, we could be best friends. All right, bring your so. wife. I'll bring my wife. I'll bring the kids too. They'll yeah. love it. We we'll yeah. can just let them roll. Well, I have in the mules. They can have a. They can pet the mules and yeah. stuff. They'd love that. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Mules aren't like mean or anything. No, no, they're like. Big, I had a mule kick large. me one time. Well, they I did will have do that yeah. if they're mean. Yeah, Mine I had aren't a mean. Mule kick me one time. Yeah. <clears throat> What'd you do to it? Um, I was probably pulling his ear or something. Yeah, you did. Yeah, something. I was a kid. I, yeah, was, you did, you I did probably wasn't being very you nice. You did something to it. <laughs> no, I, you guys, I I just really love everything you're doing online. I love how you're Thank picking you. up all these platforms. You're inspiring people. You're yeah. instructing. Um, do you have like online training where like people can just like hit you up and then you write them a training plan? Are you doing that as well? Oof. No, I he's don't. not doing that. I don't. But that's a I really good idea. I just gave him a good idea. Yeah. But that's a good idea. I mean, oof. 
I'm going to do that. Yeah. I'm going to do that. You could. Thank you. Yeah. You heard it here first. Reginald's yeah, you <laughs> written out training plan. That's right. Well, a lot of people go to the range, like you say, they don't yeah. have a plan. They don't know what they're doing, and they're wasting a lot of time. Right, right, right. And when you get there, if you have a plan, well, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Facts. facts so facts. you have to have a plan yeah. when you step out. Like yeah. when I go shoot, I have a plan for the day. Like, okay, right. what is my objective today at the range? Am I, you know, am I mounting an optic, mm -hmm. confirming zero at a hundred, mm -hmm. and then tracking data at distance and, mm -hmm. and making sure everything's set? And right. then, am I doing any positional training? If I'm positional training, right. am I switching guns? Am I running the same gun? What right. am I doing? What ammo do I need to bring? I mean, I always have like a plan yeah. when I hit the range. Yeah. Um, like some days, I'll say like I'm going to practice drawing from the purse, which I'm not a huge fan of off-body carry. But right, okay. I mean, I will off-body carry. Yeah. I carry a fanny pack a lot. Like, yeah. okay, what's my training plan for that today? What firearm am I going to run? What you know what I mean? Like, and then I run. Okay, I'm going to start with three yards. I'm going to work back to 15. Am yeah. I going to? You know what I mean? What is what is the goal? When I when I uh, what's today? Wednesday. Yes. So when I'm back out on the range on on Saturday, um, typically I before then I go through. YouTube and I'm kind of scouring YouTube of different guys shooting, whether it be Millspec Mojo, who I just met, and he's so awesome, he's so loving. Um, T Rex Arms guy, uh, Grantham. Like I'm scouring YouTube looking for what are they doing? Yeah, what are they doing to be so good, right? And I'll screenshot that video. I'll have like eight videos um, and already what you teed go up. Do. I'll set up my tablet. I'll have those videos. I'll set up my camera so I'm recording myself and I'm just running. I'm just running, that's whether so awesome. movement, whether it be static, whatever the case may be. So that's how I plan my, my training, my training days. And I know it's a little bit, you know, unconventional, but it, it's I didn't start really actually getting pretty good until I started watching guys like that. Yeah. You know, so. Um, well, there's so yeah. a reason that they're successful and yeah. there's a reason that they have YouTube videos. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And I have you know, it's crazy. Maybe like two weeks ago, I had a guy reach out to me, and he said to me, and this made me feel so, so good. He said to me, he's like, hey, he's like, what you're doing really motivated me to start shooting more. Yeah. He's like, I bought a bunch of guns a year ago, and I didn't shoot any of them. Um, he's like, Look, watching your videos really helped me just kind of yeah. get out to the range and yeah. da, da, da. And I was like, man, that made me feel so good, mm -hmm. you know, that I yeah. could motivate someone. Yeah, like, yeah you're inspiring like others. My, like my stuff is, I don't think my stuff's the best, but just to know that, the work that I'm putting in every day yeah. is like motivating somebody else yeah. to get out there. Like it almost made me cry. Ah, like it really awesome. did. Cause I, cause I was like that. Like I reached out to somebody when I first started, I was like, look, man, like I see what you're doing. Da, 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 da. And, and now I, you're here on yeah, my podcast. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like yeah. if you want to get into the space, yeah. just start make start making the steps to do it. You yeah. know, get out there, train, you know, you don't want to be one of these guys out there that just has a bunch of guns and you're not training, yeah. you know? Get out there, train, you know, do what you gotta yeah. do, yeah, and we're make content. Yeah, we're huge advocates for safe, responsible yeah. firearms ownership yeah. and training and, and being prepared and, um, you know, know how to use your firearm, be right. comfortable with it, and um, that's part of it. You know, we all wanna be the best examples, and you're a father, you're a great example to yeah. your kids, and that's very, that's awesome. So, you guys, I wanna- And be nice to people. Be nice yeah. to people online, okay? All right. I know, there's mean people. Leave a like, yeah. leave a comment, share, yeah. push people's stuff out. Like, we're in the same community, yeah. right? We should be helping each yeah. other, pushing everybody out. That's why I do collabs, man, because yeah. I try to collab with people with 200 followers. I try to collab with people with yeah. 40, 50,000. Like, yeah. we're all going to be shadow banned here pretty soon, you yeah. know? If you're not already, it's coming. So we yeah. all got to help each other within the community. That's right. That's we really right. do. You guys, I want you to follow. Give me your handle again. At Reginald Justin Official on Instagram. So only spell firearms. That. Spell oh, uh, at Reginald Justin Official. R E G I N A L D J U S T I N Justin Official O F F. It's a long one. We know official. how to spell official. I C I A L. We know how to spell it. It's all um, good. It's just your first name. I yeah. wanted them to oh, get right. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> and then yeah. only firearms uh, YouTube channel. Uh, brand new YouTube channel just started. Just some shorts on there. Um, some great stuff coming on there as well. Yeah, you're so, yeah. you're running some fun, fun gear, cool guns. Right, it's right. exciting to watch. I want you guys to check them out. And um, thank you for 
joining us at your first shot show. Thank you so much. This has been great. Welcome this has been awesome. You're gonna, he's yeah. going to be putting his feet up on his bed later today. <laughs> Promise you that. Okay. I'm a, I'm a foot soaker kind of guy. I like his, to soak my His feet. ankles are cankles yeah, already. Okay. Yeah. He's going to get them steps in today. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, I this appreciate you great. guys. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Wild Nine Cut podcast. Uh, Reginald walked by all the other gun booths and came to the Ruger booth for a reason. So uh, check out Ruger Firearms as well. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.